Now with my sharp pencils we can really get to groups with this now. Using black and, and to start to shape this section of the eye. off until the actual eyeball is done but I want to get as far as I can now here we're we've got a lighter area there but with a darker area above it and then we've already done this but now it's, you remember I did say I probably need to go back in well I do just a bit more depth in there and that area of light which I also put in is going to retain be retained but I've now developed just a little bit more than I had before. Now I'm going to use 181 again because I feel that we need to be a little darker before we do our little trick of lightening it up. A little darker there as well and a little darker there as well. Now this is another area. The more you look at your reference picture when you're doing this the better it will be. Not necessarily as I say I don't like to do every hair but I like to see all the little details and tonal changes because apart from being fascinating and interestingly no end they're a challenge now now we've done that we can now put a little bit of black in there ah oh, that's lovely now you can I, I hope when you look at this and of course you, you can replay it which is a nice thing about the video you can see how this actually started out life and uh, it's jolly nice too now coming back in I need to put the 233 it's not really important at this stage that that is, is sharp because you think oh that's not a sharp point can it? no it's not it's not not really that important it's really just something I'm adding on almost like a blending tool and I do like that that's uh, really looking quite spectacular now black to the black Black then is giving me that little bit of extra depth there, fading off slightly so we get a roundness to that. Me. A little more depth in here, just added a, just a touch more, a little bit more depth in there, and then we can work on this bit uh, once we've finished the eye off. Quite happy there, I'm quite happy with it that's quite light in fact it's a bit too light now so what I'm going to do is put just a touch of two three oh in mm, oh, I don't know it's not too light there that is actually working out very well there but that is just a touch light so I'm going to come back in with two three three four one eight one I've had people say to me how many times you go over a pit? over a, a section to get it right and there isn't any possible way I can answer that really it's until it works how do you know when it's worked well that's just experience so I can't tell you that now I'm just going to put because I've kind of fiddled with that I've lost some of that 169 but I hope by putting by showing you these videos in the kind of detail which I do I hope that it kind of gives you the, the idea of how you should go about it. Now I'm happy with that, I'm happy with that, that's worked out almost exactly as I wanted it, just a little touch, get out of the way, a little touch of the light there. Right, it's eye time folks. Now we, we're going to start off quite dramatically by putting in 187. Now the reason I do that is because I want this, or this is going to be covered by no end of colours eventually. But I want the colour to, to come through 
If I put grey underneath, which would have been the obvious thing to do, I suppose, uh, it still would have worked. But I'd rather have that colour underneath there coming through eventually to give me the sort of turn on. Now I can put some grey in here by coming on the edge. Basically what I've done, I've done it the other way around. Instead of putting the grey on first, I've put the grey on over the top and subdued that colour. But I'm hoping that that will eventually still shine through, just as that up here when I put the 230 in. Same thing happened. Now on there, while I've got that 233 in my hand, I'm also going to put the 233 on as a base for the eye. Now already you can see that I toned down that ochre quite dramatically. Right, now I'm going to use another colour now. We're going to bring in a couple of other colours here. Um, I'm going to use, first of all, I'm going to use a 283, which is a burnt sienna. And that will temper that ochre a little more. Now that is getting there now. I've now realised I did make the right choice. Because by now, if I put grey underneath that, that would have been very dull. But I know I can see that the, the colour there. And then we're going to use 177. 177 is a little stronger colour. And the 177 also will go on top of the 233 in the eye. Now that should be starting to look good to you. What about all this up here? Well, we, we don't want to put these two lighter colours up there. So what we've got to do is to use the colours we're using at the moment up there. But just before we do that, I'm going to bring the Wonderful 7 around the edge of the eye, like that. Okay. And just fill it in a little bit. So the ochre is beginning to dull right down now that I put in originally. I'm going to start with a 283 up there, just right on the very edge, like that. Now, this is where we've got to be careful because that's where the white light is going to be shining through. Uh, we've taken care. And there's one other thing that I realise I ought to be mentioning, that that is not the outer rim of the eye. That goes across there. In fact, I'll do it with a 181. That is actually part of the eyeball there. So what we need to do now is just to darken this a little. You don't have to do it. The way I'm doing this, um, you, I'm just being guided by my experience, what I feel will work. But you could be looking at this slightly differently. It doesn't really have to, you don't have to follow the same idea. As long as the end result turns out to be the same, you know, that's all that matters. And you can see how many times I'm flicking backwards and forwards with, with pencils. And this is the way I would normally work. I'm just doing a little bit at a time. Now you can see the, the light in there. It's not going to be that colour. It's going to be much darker than that. But you can see where that now is, is now part of the eye itself and not that it looked earlier part of the eye surround. So we'll just now just use our colours again, 230, 233, 181, a touch of colour in there just to just to darken it down a little bit. Now we've, we've got the separation so we now know and how it's working. A little bit of a little bit of black really I think might be in order here just to give us clarity. Just there. I hope that you're enjoying this as much as I'm enjoying doing it. It is fun. By seeing it done 
like this, a little tiny bit at a time. That's black, wrong colour. 181 I'm looking for here. Because remember, we can always bring it back again. It looks as though I've gone too far until you pick just a little spot of white and you put it back again. And this is where. Well, that's looking good now. Look, now, just to darken the top of the eye because we've got a crack on now. You can push your foot about all day. It won't get you there anywhere. Now, just there, I'm going to. I've seen another area. I was talking in my podcast, I don't know whether how many of you have listened to it, about little voices that I get. I'm not going mad, folks. It's not voices, it's like feelings that I get in my head. And that sort of gives me either warning bells that something's going wrong or colours, colour numbers, and it's a feeling. I don't have a little voice telling me, oh, you've got to use 230 now, which I'm using at the moment, or you've got to use black. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. It's just a feeling I get. But I've, I've learned to listen to those feelings, and, and they do, and they're remarkable. Now, you see how I now switch from the eye and come back onto the eye, surround, because it the way I'm doing the eye now is such that I can see different effects that are needed. A bit lighter in there. But, that, but the whole thing is beginning to work. <coughs> and now is the time, really, when we have to start thinking depth. So I'm now going to take the plunge and put black in the centre of the eye. Really just there. I don't want it any further, and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to put the black on this very edge there, and I'm going to continue it there. Now, you see, what I was telling you about sharp points and how important that they are. Now, this is where it's all going to happen. Just under there, we've got the shadow. So, we put that shadow in. It's quite a strong shadow, too. And then we can bring it in. That's nearly there. Now with our with our one double seven, we can now start developing the depth. It's one double seven first, and then one double nine, because the one double seven creates the base really. Now that that black I put in there, I didn't put it all over because what I, do, I didn't want to do. Is I didn't want the, the eye to be too sharp. If you look at a dog's eye, you'll see that it doesn't have a pupil like we have. It, it, it's like a foggy pu pupil, the best I can describe it. And that go around there like that. Gosh, this is coming alive now, folks, isn't it? All those things I did now are resulting in this. It's just one little thing that I didn't I have need to do. I need to cut back just a little bit here I've seen because we it's it's an expression that we're trying to create now. The feeling the dog is looking very soft looking. If you were doing a wild animal it would be altogether different. But here because we're we're doing this rather wonderful animal um, docile creature. We want to create that now. Here, here comes the black now. The black over the top. And then I'm going to do something that is quite startling and scary because then we've got to, this is far too light. So two double three fuses To do it folks. You've got no choice there. A little bit of light in the middle to bring back just a touch of light there. And 
then what we do is with our 283 we come back in here and all of this is smoothed off using really I'm using the blender in a in a blend uh, sorry the pencil as a blender really there now now that is coming very very nice indeed we need still a little bit more black and that needs to be just a little bit more of a depth there and we need a almost a separation between this and this and then the black around the edge of that again very very nice making sure I did tell you I was going to do this from beginning to end didn't I well you see how important though it is for you to see it like that and we've still got a couple of little tricks up our sleeve though now I'm quite happy with that what I want to do is just put a little just a touch of blue in that just to put a slight blue influence on the light the highlight which you know I did when I first started it's going to be a foggy light well it is and then wait for this because it's going to happen instant the white goes back in very pinpoint of light there and then we just very carefully if it didn't work first time it has actually worked brilliantly Wow, just a little touch of light here. And then we bring this one back. Look at the difference in colour that we had there when we started. And then we just bring this back. Now it's acting really like a blender just to put just a smidgen of light back in again. That's fantastic. You've seen it all. Thanks. Now I will probably, in all fairness, look at this again off camera and spend just a little bit more time titivating. Uh, but you've actually seen everything that really you need to see. Now I just need to just just put little touches here and there, which would really bore you because you wouldn't see the difference between the two. Let me pull back now on that eye and you can see how effective that is.